Hello, welcome to KubeCon. Um, we're here today to talk about um, Notary V2, redesigning the secure supply chain for containers. Um, it's me and Steve here, um, and Omar not here, unfortunately, but uh, hey. Um, well, it's a virtual conference, so Omar is even more virtual. He's probably actually here while you're doing this, but not while we're doing this so anyway. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's uh, it's great to be here, and um, let's um, let's get let's get started. Um, uh, who are you? Who are we indeed? <laughs> um, I'm Justin Cormack. I'm an engineer at Docker. Um, I'm also a notary maintainer and a member of the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee. I work a lot with um, security and CNC, so I'm really interested in all the bits of how security fits in with containers, but I'm also, I've been working for, you know, for five years now at Docker, I've been very much embedded in the whole, how do we do containers, how do we make them better space? Every container has a bit of Justin in it. So, <laughs> I'm Steve Lasker, I work at uh, Microsoft on the Azure Container Registries for ACR and MCR. Um, I work a because of that, because registries are at the source of all you know cloud computing at this point, I get involved in a lot of the end-to-end -end workflows, including security. And as part of that, uh, I work a lot with the community and the OCI Technical Oversight Board um, for things like notary, um, as well as artifacts and uh, other things that we do under OCI. So it's very fun to be able to continue to work on this with Justin and others. Uh, and I'm I'm as a product manager with. Um, registry, ECR registry at Amazon. So he's also really heavily involved in the whole registry and container ecosystem. So it, it's, a, it's a good team we've got. Um, just to frame this, this is really about supply chain security um, and why it's important. Um, uh, the way I like to tell the supply chain security story is back in, in the good old days before the whole cloud thing happened, you had things like hardware firewalls and actual cables you plugged in and you knew that if the computer was plugged into this cable it would get this network and straightforward things like that but everything is software now um, and if an attacker can just modify your software you can change absolutely anything to do with the infrastructure and connect the computer to a different computer rewire things rewire networks rewire connections rewire tls certificates rewire you know change absolutely everything and so your code suddenly starts to really matter and it really matters that the right code gets into production and that someone hasn't come along and made any modifications to it and that your code's got you know security checks in it and that you understand how everything gets from source code into production and make sure the right bits get into production um supply chain attacks have been growing um not Petya is a famous one from 2018 caused billions in damage Brought, you know, brought down all of companies. Um, a supply chain attack um, indirectly via a, um, you know, a, a Ukrainian piece of accounting software. I mean, um, probably a state level attack. You know, these things are important. And so we want these, we want protections against these in the container ecosystem because like more and more people are shipping more millions of things with containers and this becomes really important. I mean, containers are effectively becoming the next virtualization stack. We keep on moving up the stack from you know physical machines to virtual machines, and this is just the next way to get best first, better virtualization. Uh, it's got to be secure. And, yeah, and 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 actually, in many ways, we have opportunities to build better practices than with VMs. I think that's what's one of the exciting things about yeah. it. Not only is it, in a way, I mean, like there there are potential risks because everything's software, but actually, the fact that everything's software means it's more mutable. There's a lot we can do. The artifacts are more manageable. We've got a better ecosystem around them than VMs ever, ever did. So I think there's there's a real opportunity to do this really, really well with the containers, and that's what's really exciting about the container. It's not the fact it's a container; it's the fact that we can build better infrastructure around these things. Um, then a bit of history about no. This is Notary V2. How did Notary V1 start? Where did, where were we? Um, Notary v1 was an implementation of the update framework, which is a um, kind of cool name, um, usually known as tough uh, to its friends, um, as the update framework adapted to containers. Um, it is appropriate it came out of NYU. Yeah. You know, it's New York tough. <laughs> you, are, uh, you, you know the New York tough CM, do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
It was based originally around the security problem of Linux package re repos, such as apt or more generally language package repos such as npm. But it was originally um, the work came out of studying what went wrong with, um, you know, your package manager. Um, turned out it was a bunch of security issues, um, serving up fake packages and com com claiming that your package is Nginx when it's not. Serving up replay attacks, serving up an old package and saying it's a new one. Um, just deleting packages from mirrors and saying that there aren't any updates to this package to keep people on an insecure version. Uh, changing dependencies between packages, uh, mixing and matching dependencies and, and, and so on. So there's a whole uh, set of papers around what these threats were. And so the idea was to kind of um, take, these, take these ideas and models and apply them to containers was the original idea. It was originally a Docker project, um, and um, back in 2015, and um, we worked at Docker with the NYU people who had invented Tuff, and um, this joined CNCF in 2017 as one of the um, one of the quite early projects in CNCF, along with the Tuff specification itself, which is also a CNCF project. Um, but there was a kind of a bunch of issues. I think um, 2015 was an awful long time ago in the la in the world of containers. Um, that was back when basically when I started working in this space. I actually, was not involved with this orig originally. It had just been launched when I joined Docker. I think um, my first DockerCon was in Barcelona, and I think that's where the launch was, if I remember. I think it's that one. Yeah. Um, we gave everyone Yubi keys for signing their containers um, <laughs> as a, under the chair prize. I think I still have mine. <laughs> um, but back then, containers in production were really new. We didn't really know what all the issues were. We didn't have a kind of feel for exactly what the workflows were going to be. Um, like, the, the, uh, you know, the, the whole way that people actually work with containers was still in flux. I think there was a bunch of design mistakes. We'll talk about some of them in a minute. But now the security needs are really, really important and getting this absolutely right is important. And you know, we've had time to reflect on what the best practices are and where we're going with containers and where we want to be in the next five years. Um, bunch of issues to fix. Are they, um, the first one really is that um, Notary was added as a sort of sidecar, you know, not 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 a sidecar in the con in the exactly container sense, but it runs on the side of a registry. It basically has its own database, its own server, and that was quite good for just shipping it without um, modifying stuff and without changing stuff. But it's actually um, we've really developed since then a kind of whole registry native ecosystem. I'm mean, Steve. You can talk more about that. You've been involved a lot in that recently as well, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, it's just the, the, there was so much value in the work that was done in registries and the abstraction models that um, when we started looking at other artifacts that we needed to manage in deployment, such as Helm, and you know, we, we started this project as to how to kind of stuff it in, uh, that the more we were doing that, you know, Singularity came up, say, hey, we'd also like to use a registry. Uh, CNAB was starting. Um, there was some questions around Terraform and others, and we're like, can we just leverage this common infrastructure so that it works across all clouds? Because we can't really ask the Helm team to build a Helm CLI that's unique to Azure. It needs to work across all registries. So we went down this OCI artifacts approach. And what was really nice about that is, is just there's so many things that we can now leverage that you know, global production resilient infrastructure, including putting signatures in. And you know, where we talk about the sidecar, like who cares about the implementation details? The problem is, is that was leaking out. And if I pulled an image without notary enabled, I would get one set of you know artifacts, you know, images at the time. And if I turned it on, I get a different one. So it, it just created this very end user poor experience. And one of the biggest problems is you couldn't actually move the signatures from one registry to another. Um, that's kind of one of the key scenarios we see is I have a pub something that's on some public registry. I need to bring it in my private registry so I have control over you know that content, whether it be VNets or making sure that I, nothing changes on me. Um, if the signature doesn't move, how do I prove that this thing that I've got in my private registry is the same thing it was originally? So those were some of the key problems that we just had to overcome to make this thing usable. 
It just so happens that the Artifacts approach allows us to do that because if every major registry in, uh, supports Artifacts, then we will be able to support signatures as well. In so in addition to the, that being, I mean, I think in a way that's been our number one requirement the way through, but I think um, there's a whole bunch of requirements that are really important about usability and usage. We've, yep. We haven't had a lot of people using Notary V1. We've had a lot of complaints about usability issues with it and um, I think I put a separate thing about observability and understandability and debugging. These are kind of related, though. It's difficult to see um, what the state of the world is, what the um, the clients are not very good at telling you um, what the signatures that there are there are and why, um, for example, why it's complaining you can't sign something. Um, and if th you know if things go wrong, it's very difficult to debug the state of the world because the the tooling's really not um, not very good from this point of view. In in particular, um, there's a kind of um, there's a tendency to fail if it, to fail closed, which is the right thing to do when some a signature check fails. But that actually means it's hard to see. It doesn't give you a good explanation of why that happened, which is yeah. really makes it very difficult for people to see what's going on because if something something has expired so it doesn't check something else which you're expecting it to check and you don't know what's gone wrong so you don't know how to remediate um, and the security model is not widely understood which I think is is a partly an explanation problem and partly um, it, I think people's model in their heads of what actually signing is for a not very clear, and I think we need to explain that clearly, more clearly. But there's also some fundamental security issues that um, really are not addressed. And this this Tofu one, it's not about the food stuff. It's basically trust on first use, and um, part of the model with Notary V1 as used. I mean, it's, it's not actually a requirement of Notary. It's a requirement of all, but of the Docker impl Docker Trust implementation in particular. But it's also the way, the only, effectively the only implementation. So it's kind of um, uh, the way it is used is that um, when you pull a container, it'll pull the signatures and check them the first time in the same way as SSH does. And it says, do you want to, effectively SSH says, do you want to use this host key? But for containers, this doesn't work very well because a lot of times you're pulling a container. It's basically it's a it's an ephemeral server. It's always first use, and so. Um, it, and that is something that's changed a lot, right? Since when, when we Docker first started this project years ago, we didn't really think about the serverless kind of model where every time a container is pulled, it's a clean, pristine environment that the clouds kind of hand you, so you only pay for what you use. We were very focused on, you know, VMs would come up and they'd have lots of cached images, and that was okay. You'd kind of build up some state, but we we're now building to this ephemeral client model where every time wherever the containers run, it's like brand new. Yeah, um, yeah. That becomes a challenge. And actually, and people are actually doing this for security reasons because having clean starts is actually a good way of keep of making sure that yeah. everything's refreshed. Attackers are out. All those things. So there's there's actually good. I mean, I think the ephemeral thing is actually one of the great things we've actually managed to do, and that's good, but it basically does affect security models of things that assume long-term state, and we have to adapt to, to that model. So, how are we getting there with V2? Um, we started uh, really at KubeCon um, a year ago. Um, originally, we had a meeting with Docker and Amazon and Microsoft um, on, the, on the side, and, um, San Diego on one of those rainy days in rainy San Diego. Um, uh, but um, and then we had a series of meetings back when you could have meetings um, in Seattle over in Impressive. December and January, I think uh, February even. I think we had we had a few meetings in person, which was actually uh, really great. Um, uh, lots of people involved. NYU with the people who've been working on TAF, um, IBM, Red Hat, VMware. Loads more, J, uh, JFrog, um, uh, all sorts of other people have been involved. So it's a very broad harbor. Harbor, yes, har yes. Well, VMware, well, yeah. Well, but yeah, more, multiple parts of VMware. Um, so it's been a really great um, community thing coming together to um, to really work out as a community what everyone wants. Um, we had hoped 
it would finish sooner. Um, I think growing consensus is actually really difficult for, especially for, I mean, things like signing and uh, supply chain security are complicated and, um, and trying to uh, get everyone aligned with understanding what each other's problems are and what the kinds of solutions that we want to explore are and why things are not working now is actually really complicated. And I think that um, that that did take a, a long time. I think we were a bit slowed down by the COVID thing and um, uh, and just, you know, generally, um, um, I mean, I think we are we are making progress now. I'm kind of pleased with the progress we've made in the last few months. But it's I think it's um, it's always you can always be optimistic and think that things will happen fast. But it's just difficult sometimes. You know, it's just um, and we we're just blame everything on COVID in 2020. Yeah. We just want to get past 2020 as fast as possible. But, but we don't want to get. I mean, <laughs> but, we do want to get this right. We don't, and we want to yeah. lay down a framework that everyone's happy with and we don't want the community to fragment because uh, we, we don't want people saying this doesn't work for us we're just going to do something else we want one solution that works for everyone's use cases and so we've been very inclusive and try, try to get as many people in as possible who are doing things now or got interest because it really i think having everyone doing the same thing and having interoperable tools is really really important here I mean, if an image can't move between clouds and between registries on-prem, different clouds and so forth, then we failed. So, you know, we have to make sure everybody's on board, everybody agrees, it meets the, uh, the scenarios everybody needs, and then we're good. You know, no big deal. <laughs> um, and, you know, this kind of highlights that what we've also, some of the problems we've talked about is, you know, multiple the multiple signature problem. Um, which has an effect in a number of different ways. So uh, we'd like to try to have fun. Some things can get way too serious. So we have, uh, you know, a company. We just, you know, fictitious Webit Networks that creates this net monitor software. It's an ISV kind of product um, where they're building it in their environment and they create a key that they're not to create a key. They create a signature with their key and they sign it. They could then post that content on Docker Hub as a curated location. Um, but Acme Rockets is this company that wants to consume the software. They don't know who Abbott Networks are, but they trust Docker. So Docker certifies that content. So great, okay, I will now use that. Uh, so if I go to Docker Hub, I'll actually see two signatures, one from Docker Hub, one for Abbott Networks. And then the Acme Rocket team can bring that software in as they bring the net monitor software into their environment, they'll only bring in stuff they trust from Docker Hub. So that's a first check for the signature. They'll run some functional tests to make sure it works in their environment because it's not just the first time. They won't be able to get updates. And then if it passed those tests, they will add a third signature, which is the Acme Rocket signature. So now when they try to move it to their production environment, they actually don't care about the other signatures. They only will put things in production that has an Acme Rockets, you know, validation on it. So you can kind of see this progression of flow where the software starts all the way over in, you know, way upstream, if you will, moves into another environment. The signatures move with it. The signatures are added to add additional attestation. But the digest and the tag of that original software never change. Um, so then when it moves into Acme Rockets, we you know, can continue to add signatures to it as we go. So that's like a, the major model of what we're trying to do um, and support this you know, workflow. But there's, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, detail in that, that, that doesn't cover, like how does, you know, how does the end users have policies what they trust, who, um, right. which, you know, which bits of um, you know, which keys attest to what, how do we deal with, um, one of the problems that the Notary V1 has is that there were too many keys and there was a huge proliferation of them. And so we need to arrange keys in manageable, but not too extreme way. And so there's all sorts of, um, uh, of issues that follow on from, from these scenarios that we're going through. Um, we've made quite a lot of progress with, storing signatures in registries i think i mean we've we um one of the aims here has been to have a very generic signature model we don't want to um 
just constraining signatures to being something that's specific for Notary v2. It's like signatures are something that uh, could be used for um, other security applications, and so we want to have a generic solution. But there's um, we had one requirement that really um, is one of the things that's actually meant that we've looked at actually making registry changes. So. Um, there's this question about inline versus detached signatures. Really, the way to understand that is like, is the signature part of an object, and therefore, um, as registries are content addressable, part of its content hash? Because either the signature is, um, you know, actually part of the JSON manifest of the object, or it's referenced from the JSON manifest of the object. And so, if you want to change the signature, you actually have to change the object, and then in the registry it means you have to re-tag the object. Now. A lot of people don't like the retagging model in um, registries. Uh, lots of registries are now implementing models where tags are immutable and can't actually be changed uh, once they've been, once the content has been shipped to the registry. And so, there's there was a big, we don't want we don't want retagging. We want to be able to add another signature um, for a different purpose, like. Um, you know, I bring in an object and it's signed by, so it's Ubuntu, it's signed by Canonical, that's great, but I also want to add a signature as part of my workflows, but I don't want to um, do any, you know, I don't want to chain, I, I want any code that is looking for genuine Ubuntu 14.04 from the Ubuntu source not to have any issues that, that, oh, actually this content doesn't look like genuine Ubuntu, it's got a different hash. Oh, I have to look at it, I see that the hash is oh, no. actually, like it's actually an additional signature. It's not a problem. It's still genuine Ubuntu. So these kinds of concerns meant that we we've um, been actually proposing a major change in registries to add extra APIs, which where you can basically have a well, a detached signature, which basically just means a signature that's in a separate document, but not just detached as in a separate document, but as in there isn't a pointer to it from the um, registry object. Instead, there's a pointer from the signature to the registry object, and we want an API that can actually traverse that backwards. And that's a real um, significant registry change because registries don't do things backwards right now. They're forwards <laughs> only. Um, there's no reverse. No reverse. It's very much a, um, a straightforward, like if you, you traverse a tree downwards and, the, and not, not upwards. There's actually, I think, potentially other interesting use cases for this type of model. Um, but anyway, so at the moment we're, we're doing work on actually putting that into the, um, the Docker distribution registry reference client um, and the spec. Um, and so, because I think that there was enough demand for this um, that it was seen as important to actually design these, make these registry changes around that. So that's a kind of substantive change. I mean, one of the uh, one of the ex interesting ones about that is you know people have these deployment manifests, whether it be a kube YAML, you know, a Helm chart, or just even a Docker file that references something with a digest and a, a, a tag. And there's you know tag locking, you know, semantics and so forth, and even Docker lock is some projects that are out there. The challenge is if we to add another signature in the Acme Rocket scenario, for instance if that digest has to change for that tag, that kind of breaks the workflow. So that was you know, a big piece to this. Um, so for the demo, we can show what we're at on the current prototype. Yeah, so, so, so just to talk about um, prototyping, yeah, yeah. We've, we've started prototyping a, a couple of months ago now. These are not in any way meant to be like final things do not use, and <laughs> but these are um, kind of worked examples to show how things how things work, how we're putting things together, how we're experimenting with things, and the kinds of things so that people can see them. And but they're they're not totally they're not just totally fake. These actually implement the actual um, work behind the scenes. And the, there's actual things in registries, and there's signatures in registries, and all the formats and so on are documented, and and they're all in the in the PRs that these correspond to. So it's um it's pretty it's 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 very real price typing, not just mock up. So there, nothing up our sleeves. We'll take a look. We have nothing locally on the machine. 
So what I want to be able to do is, you know, sign, build and sign. So what I'm going to do is just make things a little bit simpler and I'm going to set an environment variable for our image. We've got this registry nv2.azurewebsites.net and it's hosting the changes that we've been proposing to the distribution, uh, Docker distribution or the distribution spec. So now what I could do is I can say docker build dash t and our image. And what that's going to do is just take this Docker file from Hello World and just add something to it. Really super simple. And that's not helpful. Dot. Oh, thank you. Minor detail. Um, so now we can see that I've, I've got my image, and that's great. And there's that image. Now, what I want to do is when I sign it, I you know I need to enable the notary workflow. So I'll say Docker notary uh, dash dash enabled. And what we're doing here is we're you know saving this configuration. And now you'll see we've got this for you know our initial prototype where we have just enabled true. So now when I want to sign this thing, I'm going to say docker notary sign, and I give it the key for the Azure Websites net key and the cert for these two, and then I'm signing this image. So we'll generate the manifest because we're, we're signing a manifest, and we output this JWT token. That's what's the, the OCI artifact that is the signature that we want to push to the registry. But we don't want users to have to think about pushing and pulling signatures independently. We want to build it into the experience. So I'm going to log into the registry. And when I do Docker push, what we'll see is because we're using this Docker plugin, right? We didn't actually change the Docker API, Docker CLI yet. We're using a Docker plugin that we're routing this to. Um, so now we're just going to be able to do is push the actual image and we're going to push the signature. It's just a, an additional component. And then when I want to do a Docker pull, but let's get rid of our images first. Dash Q, we'll get rid of those. And now when I do a Docker pull, I have not configured anything yet. So it's going to go look, because I have Notary enabled, says, hey, I found a signature, but you don't have any of those keys. So by the fact that I don't have any keys local that match it, it is by definition going to fail. So I don't have anything. To enable this, what I do is I put the reference to the key, the Azure Web, uh, Notary v2 Azure Website cert, and save that. And now, because I have that key locally, it's going to look up signatures, found a signature, and it's a valid signature. So now I am going to be able to see I have now found our image. So that's the prototype, right? We're, we're talking about prototypes from end to end. Um, we'll continue to experiment with this and decide if we, what experiences we like, how do we validate this with things like OPA, and then figure out the next steps. Um, so, um, so going back, going back. Yeah, so um, what's interesting, and Justin was kind of talking about this before, is you know everything related to how do I want to store things in registries? It's more than just images and home charts and CNABs and op uh, OPAs and uh, WASMs and other things. I want to be able to store signatures and have a movement. In fact, I want to be able to put verification objects, signatures on any of those things. Well, I also need to know, well, who signed the signature? What Git commit was associated with it? What was the, you know, when was it added and so forth? So we, and once we're doing this reverse lookup on, hey, I'm looking for this thing, what artifacts are impacted by this thing? Then we can actually start to create more of this generic API for finding these things. Um, and that's been kind of a lot of the feedback as well. Is like, if you're going to make a change to our registries, let's make sure that I don't have to make yet another change for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Yeah. So Gen there's the Gen typical problem of... Yeah, generic tools that will enable us to do more. 
more good things in future. Yeah, the generic APIs and the generic tools that'll do that. So um, we are definitely making sure that we're doing that, you know, canonical balancing of the boiling the ocean, which will never happen and versus a small pond. Uh, so we're trying to make, we, we feel good about the progress th thus far. And these prototypes yes. help, help us, us figure, figure out, out where, where the rough, rough edges. edges. For, For instance, uh, how, many, how, many, how, many how many signatures, signatures are, on are on there? I only, I only care, care about, about this one. one signature. So when I'm looking up uh, signatures for an artifact, don't make me download all of them. I want to download only the signatures for their, that match a certain criteria. Uh, so that's the kind of things that we're looking at. So next steps, really, um, we're carrying on with prototyping. We're doing a lot of work around key management. There's a separate working group on that. We need to consolidate recommendations of that into the requirements. Uh, then get agreement on the directions from these prototypes and make sure uh, there's, there's actually other prototypes other than the one we're showing that are going on as well. So, um, and so, and then we have to check everything against our threat modeling that we did earlier on um, and then get to production next year, which will be great for fun. Um, so if you, we just it's just let's just get past twenty yeah, twenty. Kill twenty twenty, <laughs> and twenty twenty one will be nice and secure. Uh, so come yes. and join us. Um, uh, we have weekly meetings. GitHub, uh, Notary, CNCF, CNCF Slack uh, is the sort of central source of um, where everything is. So thanks very much, and see you soon. Thanks.